Good morning. On this, the Assumption of the Blessed Virgin Mary, and also our birthday, we're 155 years old, and we don't look so bad. But there's always work to do. There's always things to do, and we see that in this celebration. As Mary's work is not done when she left Earth, but only began when she went to heaven. And so we begin in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you, my sisters and brothers. Today we celebrate Mary, who was always faithful to the prompting of the Holy Spirit, and was lifted up body and soul into heaven. As a parish faith community, we honor Mary and ask for her intervention for us as our parish, our patron saint on our 155th anniversary. Let us prepare for this celebration by reflecting on how faithful we have been to the promptings of the Holy Spirit in our lives and ask for God's healing and mercy. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words and what I have done in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. attentive to the things that are above, we may merit to be sharers of her glory. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, her Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen.
a reading from the book of Revelation. God's temple in heaven was opened, and the ark of his covenant could be seen in the temple. A great sign appeared in the sky, a woman clothed with the sun, with the moon beneath her feet, and on her head a crown of twelve stars. She was with child and wailed aloud in pain as she labored to give birth. Then another sign appeared in the sky. It was a huge red dragon with seven heads and ten horns, and on its heads were seven diadems. Its tail swept away a third of the stars in the sky and hurled them down to the earth. Then the dragon stood before the woman about to give birth, to devour her child when she gave birth. She gave birth to a son, a male child, destined to rule all the nations with an iron rod. Her child was caught up to God and his throne. The woman herself fled into the desert where she had a place prepared by God. Then I heard a loud voice in heaven say, Now have salvation and power come, and the kingdom of our God, and the authority of his anointed one. The word of the Lord. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, Christ has been raised from the dead, 
the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since death came through man, the resurrection of the dead came also through man. For just as in Adam all die, so too in Christ shall all be brought to life, but each one in proper order. Christ the first fruits, then it is coming those who belong to Christ. Then comes the end when he hands over the kingdom to his God and Father, when he has destroyed every sovereignty and every authority and power. For he must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet. The last enemy to be destroyed is death, for he subjected everything under his feet. The word of the Lord. set out and traveled to the hill country in haste to a town of Judah, where she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the infant leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth, filled with the Holy Spirit, cried out in a loud voice and said, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And how does this happen to me? that the mother of my Lord should come to me. For at the moment the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the infant in my womb leaped for joy. Blessed are you who believed that what was spoken to you by the Lord would be fulfilled. And Mary said, My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. For he has looked upon his lowly servant. From this day all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him in every generation. He has shown the strength of his arm, and has scattered the proud in their conceit. He has cast down the mighty from their thrones, and has lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he has sent away empty. He has come to the help of his servant Israel, for he has remembered his promise of mercy, the promise he made to our fathers, the Ab to Abraham and his children forever. Mary remained with her about three months and then returned to her home. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. 
again, happy birthday to St. Mary Parish. In many ways, it reminds me as we should be here in celebration with each other, but we are together spiritually. It reminds me of a, one of the birthdays we celebrated as children. Not mine or my brother Kelly's, but my little brother Patrick. And he became sick just shortly before his birthday. But nobody knew what it was all about until they discovered it was going to be mumps. And so, of course, the party was canceled. And so he celebrated his birthday the best he could. But it was much smaller than he imagined. But then there came a future time when there was a true celebration. And so we hear about the celebration today, the celebration of the Assumption. And there's some historical ways of celebrating the celebration in Italy. For many centuries in the towns where it would be easy to walk across in one day, not like our huge metropolitan areas that we go to, there'd be two processions in these Italian towns. The first one would start at the very far outskirts on a main street, and they would walk carrying a statue of Mary, singing hymns, giving praise for all that we celebrate today. Because Mary's on her way in this procession. She's on her way to heaven. And then there's another procession going on simultaneously. It's also moving from the outskirts of town on the same main street but it's at the opposite end of town. And that celebration, that procession, is a statue of Jesus being carried. Jesus is going out to meet his mother. Jesus is going out to arrive to meet her when she gets to heaven. So eventually, these two processions come through the different neighborhoods of the town, and they meet somewhere towards the center of town. And for most Italian towns, that would be most likely where the cathedral is. But not always, depending on how the town had developed. But they would meet wherever the center of town was, under arches of branches that are made, under floral bouquets and garlands. And these two statues would bow to each other three times. Three times to each other they would bow, symbolizing Jesus meeting Mary at the gate of heaven. And so we see these two statues coming together. And from this bowing, from this greeting, greeting of son to mother arriving, the procession would then continue on for wherever that central point in town was to then the parish church or the cathedral. Side by side, they would go. And so that is, they would go into the church to celebrate what we're celebrating now, the Mass of the Assumption. So as Mary arrives in heaven, body and soul, it reminds us that we too one day will be doing the same thing. We will be arriving, not just as a spirit, but body and soul. Not necessarily the body that we have today that we celebrate, the body that changes from year to year, even as our body has changed here at St. Mary. First, from under an oak tree on a farm where now Calvary Cemetery is on the, the shore of Lake Michigan. Then to this spot a few years later in a small wooden church. Then a few years later in a much larger wooden church. And then now this stone edifice that we love so dearly. And with that new growth also comes that decay, also comes where things need to be saved and kept and renovated as we move into other areas, into new eras, into new epics as we are experiencing this year in a pandemic. And so we are called to be like Mary, knowing she was given that singular grace of being without sin, 
we do not have that same grace, but we have many other graces. And one of the many graces we have is our mother is always praying for us, is always guiding us. We turn to our mother, and she's always going to point us to her son. And that's what she does as a queen mother. Her job was not done when she arrived at the gate of heaven. Jesus led her to her throne, the throne seated at the right hand of her son. And she does now what a queen mother would always do. She takes the petitions of the people. She takes the petitions of her children. And she brings those petitions to her son, whispering in his ear. And what son, what good son like Jesus would ever refuse his mother? So that is what we are also called to do, to help bring each other to the throne of Mary, to the throne of Jesus. Because as Mary was the Christ bearer here on earth, she continues to call us. She continues to bring us closer. She continues to lead us closer to her son. And so we are called to recognize, just as she did at the wedding at Cana, do whatever he tells you. She didn't have to have all the details. All she had to make sure that her son understood that this was an important thing for this wedding couple. And so that's what she does for us to Jesus. As we pray for health and healing, as we pray for strength to get through as family members get sick and die, as we wander lost sometimes on different paths, we come to Mary and ask for help to give us the strength, to give us the guidance for the times we find ourselves as the prodigal daughter, as the prodigal son. She helps lead us to recognizing that there's a son, that there's a father who is gracious and kind and is willing to give us everything before we even ask, before we even say we are sorry. And so we celebrate today. We celebrate with joy all the, the graces that we receive, all the graces that Mary receives, gives us all those examples. And so we are called to be like her, to also be a Christ bearer out into the world. So who in our lives do we need to point them closer to Jesus? Who do we need to point or pray to Mary, asking help in these situations, whether it be in relationships, as marriages crumble, as they need to be strengthened, as relationships with parents or relationships with children or with neighbors or communities, as we struggle with recognizing each other in our true dignities as children of God, as brothers and sisters in Christ, where do we need to ask, Mother, help us. Mother, help. Allow your son to touch us in all the ways we need to be healed. Let us be open to asking for the things that will truly make us happy, which is ultimately being brought back, brought back to heaven. And so let us celebrate today, recognizing all that Mary does, did for us while she was on earth, but especially what she does now in heaven, always bringing us to her son, always wishing that we will listen to what our son does and says in our lives that she may also say to us, do whatever he tells you. Let us stand as we recognize Mary as the Christ bearer, as the one who has been assumed into heaven, and she gives us a pathway. She gives us hope that we too, as humans, will one day be in heaven, body and soul, as we proclaim our faith in the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. 
I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men, for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and life of the world to come. Amen. Through the intercession of Mary, Mother of God, let us bring our needs and the needs of our world before the Lord. For the church, that it will follow Mary's example and be open to the Spirit in times of change and uncertainty. With Mary, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For world leaders, that the God who lifts up the lowly will fill their hearts with concern for those who are poor and vulnerable. With Mary, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are caring for those with coronavirus and those working tirelessly to find a cure and vaccine, may they be guided and sustained by the ever-present Holy Spirit. With Mary, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For our St. Mary Faith community, that our devotion to the Blessed Virgin Mary, our patron saint, will lead us ever closer to the heart of her Son. With Mary, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For our sick, that Mary, Mother of the Church, may intercede for all those in need, especially William von Haney, Susanna Zubeck, Irene Vega, and Thomas Brinkman. With Mary, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For our beloved dead, that like Mary and the saints, they will come to share Christ's glory in heaven, especially Mary Stair, Aunt of Father Kevin, and all who have died from the coronavirus. With Mary, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For Dorothy M. Farrell, for whom this Mass is being offered, and for the prayers we voice in the silence of our hearts. With Mary, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. God of justice, Along with Mary, we praise your holy name and give you thanks for all you have done for us. Hear our prayers that, following her example, we might also bear Christ to the world in our words and actions. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Salve Regina, Mater Misericordiae, Vita Dulcidu, et spes nostra salve. A te clamamus, exules filive, a te suspiramus, gementes et flentes, in hoc lacrimarum vale. Io ergo advocata nostra, illos tuos misericordia, 
Jesus converte. Et Jesus benedictum fructum ventris tui, nobis pus hoc exilium ostende. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Lord, accept the sacrifice at your hands. Praise and glory in his name for our good and for all his holy church. May this oblation, our tribute of homage, rise up to you, O Lord, and through the intercession of the most blessed Virgin Mary, whom you assumed into heaven, may our hearts aflame with the fire of love, constantly long for you, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For today the Virgin Mother of God was assumed into heaven as the beginning and image of your church is coming to perfection and a sign of sure hope and comfort to your pilgrim people rightly you would not allow her to see the corruption of the tomb since from her own body she marvelously brought forth the, your incarnate son the author of all life. And so, in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you, and with joy we proclaim.
You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and the working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. From the nights he was betrayed, he himself took bread. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with this Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis our Pope and Blaise our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you in your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom, that we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
the Savior's command, informed by divine, divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we wait the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you. My peace, I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
an act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you in my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. Grace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Let us pray. Having received this sacrament of salvation, we ask you to grant, O Lord, that through the intercession of the Blessed Virgin Mary, whom you assumed into heaven, we may be brought to the glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. Amen. Also, I'd like to thank everyone who is joining us at St. Mary's on this uh, celebration of the Assumption, our birthday also. Uh, that please know that we continue to move forward with, uh, in very safe protocols for opening our church. And so as of right now, we have confessions available at uh, 4 p.m. on Saturdays. We also have two masses and those uh, for attendance can be gotten through our website. You can sign up for reservations because we're limited to 50 at this point. At the 5 p.m. Vigil Mass on Saturdays and also the 9.30 on Sundays. In addition to that, we also, with reservations, uh, we have adoration for an hour on Sunday afternoon from 3 to 4 p.m. And then for the, the next few weeks, we will also continue with an hour of open prayer for our church on Wednesdays from 6.30 to 7.30, just for the next few weeks. And then starting in September, we'll be moving in a new direction. So please consider, uh, as long as your health allows and you're able to come and join us in all these different situations, please know that uh, even though you're not physically there, that we are together, but we would love to see you in person. And so again, we celebrate each other's birthday today for the 155th. Remember all those who have come before us, who through the sweat of their brow, through many, many sacrifices, both spiritually and physical, who have led us up to this birthday because it's our best birthday. The Lord be with you. Bow down your head for God's blessing. Born of the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Son of God, redeemed humankind. May he enrich you with his blessings. Amen. You receive the author of life through Mary. May you always rejoice in her loving care. Amen. You have come to rejoice at Mary's feast. May you be filled with the joys of the Spirit and the gifts of your eternal home. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. And one thing I forgot to mention, the chalice we used today was from uh, Father O'Leary. He was an altar server at the very first Mass out on Calvary, on the, the farm that was now Calvary Cemetery. He became a priest, and many years later, that chalice was given to us in 1913 after he passed. So we celebrate our birthday with someone who was actually there at the very beginning.